this is going to be the introduction to a new series I want to do on the M272 V6 and the M273 V8 engines. Now they made thousands of these engines from 2005 up to about 2013. They came in almost all Mercedes vehicles. So if you want to move up to one of these newer Mercedes, let's say you've been thinking about it, you're not so sure, that's the purpose of this video series. I want to walk you through some of the things that you need to look at if you're going to buy one of these. And then I'm going to share with you some things that you can do to maintain it. There are a lot of DIY jobs that you can do on these cars if you're not afraid to learn new things. And that's basically what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to learn about these engines in order to properly maintain these cars. I'm going to use this 2010 S550 as a starting example. And we get into this engine right here. This is the big V8, the 273, and you can recognize it by this unique engine cover. Now, before I get into part one, where I'm going to take you through some very easy maintenance that will allow you to get into the engine, get into the car, and start to learn about it. Some of the things you learn in this series will also help you determine the right car to buy if you're out there looking. But don't be afraid. I'm, <laughs> I know when the first computer cars came out, you know, back in the early to mid 90s, people just freaked out. It's like, I don't want that. I can't work on those. You know, I got a computer. Well, if you're going to own one of these, you can't believe how many computers this car has. And you want to ask me how much I enjoy driving this car? Let me count the ways. But before I do that, I want to take you through a little visual history of the Mercedes V8 engine starting back in the early 1970s. And I'm going to use my cars to show you some examples of various engines. And I want to do that before I start selling off some of my collection. So let me take you outside now and I'll show you one of the first small block V8s that Mercedes produced. Over the years, I've owned and lived with every Mercedes V8 engine up to the 273, including the 6.3 and the 6.9. But here is the beginning. 1970 in the U.S. market, the 3.5 was introduced. We will call that the small block V8. This is a 4.5 in a 1972 300 SEL, and you can recognize this by the electronic fuel injection. But if you look at the block, you study the valve cover, you will realize that this engine continued on in one form or another for 21 years. Let's take a look at this M116 engine in a 1983 380SL. It really doesn't look much different from the 450SL engine, except it has a smaller displacement. I guess you might call this the small block version of the Chevy 350. But after 21 years, it finally came to an end with the 560 engine. That was 5.6 liter V8. So it grew in size, but basically it maintained a very similar appearance. This is a 560 SL engine, and you can see not much has changed except the horsepower output. And by 1991, the last of these engines showed up in the W126 sedans. It's hard to believe in one form or another, these M116 and M117 engines were produced for 21 years. This is the M113 V8, mounted in a 2004 E500. These engines were produced in the U.S. market from 1998 to 2007. And you can tell this by the distinct engine cover, at least in the later models. Do any of you remember when this engine first came out and you saw this cover and you wondered, how are you supposed to work on that? So now we have the M273 engine. Don't ask me why they chose that number, okay? I'm not sure. You know, you go back to the M116, and then you go to the M117, then you go to the M119, and then the M113, and wow! Why did they jump up to 273? 
that's a question I really can't answer. In the next few parts in this series, we're going to roll the car forward and we're going to get into doing some beginning DIY maintenance. These are things that you can do if you've worked on any of these older cars. I want to work you up starting with the easy things, then we'll move up to some of the more challenging things that you may face if you're going to own and maintain one of these cars. So stay tuned for the next part in this series.